Welcome to the 57th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to the returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're glad you could be here. We've got lots going on today, especially in our craft piece. Uh, lots to talk about. Um, but it's nice to be back. It seems like forever when we do these things. But before we begin and talk about our crafts, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. Perfect. So May is wearing the Bombini cow. And that's by K.F. Jones. So we're going to have a chat about this. K.F. Jones, yes. Yes. So um, we had asked for some comments last time about pom-poms, but we did get a comment from somebody who said that I only needed to say K. Jones. And I thought, well, why do I say K.F. Jones all the time? Mm -hmm. So here's why I say it. Because in her designs on Ravelry, it says K.F. Jones. So I thought... I'm wondering if there is another designer who is Kay Jones. Right. So I thought what I would do is I would email Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears and see what she I, prefers. Or? Which pre she prefers and what was the reason behind, behind it. it. Right. So when... Because it is kind of odd that somebody would put their initial exactly. in something, right? Like exactly. That, that's unusual. Yes. So um, she was a sweetie and she emailed me back, which was very nice. And basically she said exactly what I thought is that there had been another designer um, who is Kay Jones. And so when K.F. Jones uh, went in on Ravelry, she had to put the her right. middle initial in. And what are the chances of having two designers with the same name? That's exactly. probably very rare. So. I would imagine so. So I am apologizing from the get-go because... Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears has said I can say either one and she's okay with that. But I understand that for some of you, you're thinking, why are you being so formal and saying K.F. Jones? So um, I will do my best not to say K.F. Jones, but I know it's in my <laughs> head. That's what you've been used to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Long story all about yeah. Mace Cowell. But we do appreciate the comments. Like, exactly, and that, and that absolutely. helps us check in and then check back and exactly. forth. Exactly. So but we great. appreciate uh, all the comments and we everybody's so kind and positive. Yeah. And it absolutely. just and that's what keeps us coming back to do more. Exactly. Um, what a great community of, of knitters and crafters and exactly. we just we just so thankful that you're there and that you do comment and so we really appreciate those positive happy comments. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so this Bombini cowl is made from heritage silk, which is cascade yarns. And last winter, um, Kay Jones had done um, a, like an advent sock and it needed two colors. And so I had those two colors and I had a lot left, small feet, a lot left. So I decided to do this one for you and it looks great. That I love color the colors, suits you. yeah. Yeah, it's really, really nice. I'm glad you've got small feet. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a reason you had small exactly. feet. Exactly. Now, the other thing is, as soon as May put that on, I went, oh, I think I can do something with this pattern. So I would like to start putting some beads into a cowl or into a shawl. And I think that's a good size just to get started because in some uh, shawl patterns, you need 600 beads. I Holy That's smart. a lot of beads. And they're tiny little things. I mean, I know, I know you're really... You're really getting into this. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this bead thing. And um, and I think this would look nice. But yeah. it would, you know, say it's a nice size for you to start. Right. But I know you're really enjoying that beading. Exactly. So. It's lots of fun. Yeah. Um, so anyway, stay tuned because that's probably going to happen. So that's what May is wearing. And what I'm wearing is called the Mistake Lace Shawl. And that's by Robbie Laughlin. And the uh, yarn that I used is called Color Adventures by Anna Diomina. I'm not sure I'm getting it right, but there it is. It's a silky merino light, so it's 70% merino, 30% silk. It's very light. As you can see, it's very open. There was some interesting times making this shawl. I had to put in lifelines. I had to rip back to lifelines. Lifelines are good things, by the way. Um, but it was all worth it. It was all worth it. That and, looks great. And I know my niece was knitting one at the same time as I was knitting one. Same thing. She was having trouble with it. Um, we managed to get through, and I haven't seen hers finished, so I can hardly wait mm -hmm. to see that. You should get her to send a photo. We'll put it up. That would be great. Perfect. So that's what we're wearing. And next, we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is a little house hat by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And this was part of their knitting 
university um, that they'd done for their Patreons. And I had made one for somebody for Christmas and I decided to make a second one. Now in the pattern, if you can see, this has two sets of windows and I only did one in this because I knew I needed to make it shorter. There's reasons for that. Another present, which we won't discuss who it's for. Now did you um, make these smaller than what's in there or larger or no? Um, instead of doing two sets, I only did one. But did you do the one bigger? Like did you do it bigger or is it like the actual size, like the other one would have come up to here? Yes. Okay. The hat might have been... Because they just look bigger than they do in the, the pattern. Right. right. Yeah. You know, but... Yep. Okay. There you go. But very nice. So that, the question is always pom-pom or not. Now... We got a lot of feedback on that. We which did. Which is great ideas. So this is a possibility. I think my hand's in right. the way, so I'm going to... Can you grab okay. that? Yep. So that's a possibility, the black with the black contrast color. Um, and so... I don't know. We'll see. That's cute. This was the hat, the hat we were Looks thinking like about. Looks like Cruella Deville. <laughs> <laughs> this was the other hat we were working on, and this definitely needs a black pom pom. Yeah, I think because for I sure. know there's a lot of black. Exactly. There, right? And this is the tartan. Let me see if I can find that pattern. Oh, it's called the tartan toque by Tracy Miller of the big, of the Grocery Girls. I wonder if you could do this tartan colors. Like if you could do like a tartan. You know what? It's a possibility. That would look really nice. You could exactly. do red and green or right. black watch or something. That would be cool. Exactly. Then you'd have a tartan tam. Exactly. Tartan, whatever. <laughs> now both of these hats use the same yarn and I'm using up what I have. So it's Knit Picks City Tweed DK and then the contrast is Northfield by Valley Yarns. And I had made a color work sweater and I had extra left. So I, I, we talked about, I tend to buy extra because I don't want to run out. Very nice calling. Exactly. So Very we're nice. doing hats for people. So it's lots of fun. Now, the next set of hats are for our boys. And they don't watch us. So I'm not worried about that. <laughs> it's for Christmas. Um, and so let's talk first of all about Scott. So that's my son Scott and... Do you want to explain yeah, why? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, now, Scott has a, when he was younger, he got this uh, skull tattoo when he was, uh, I don't know, I guess when he was 18, when he could decide himself. Right. Because I said, I, you know, he can't get uh, any tattoos until he was 18. Right. So he decided to go big. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. Yeah. I mean, that's his thing. And, exactly. And, and, you know, each to their own. So, but you never see it because he's all, he always covers it right, up, which is right. good. And I said, you know even if you keep things off your face. So anyway, it is large, and it, and it but I never see it. But we know it's there. So anyway, Colleen was nice enough to hit, uh, to knit him a skull hat, which is kind of cool. Right, so this is the Knitted Skull Cap, and that is by Joan Laws. It's a free pattern. There are all kinds of sizes in the pattern, so it's great. Now I had to do a little adjusting because the yarn that I was using, um, as much as this said worsted, the gauge was different. So I'm really happy with that. It turned out I'm, great. It, I'm practicing my color work. It's getting better. And I think Scott will like it. He will love it. Yeah. He'll love that. I think they're going to like that. He'll get a lot of wear out of that because he walks back and forth to work. So Exactly. So hopefully that will work That'll out That will put well. a smile on his face. I know it will. <laughs> so that's that. So then we have my son, Thomas. Um, and he is... Um, working on his apprenticeship to be a millwright. So you and I talked about it, thought, what can we do? So we talked about tools and that kind of thing. So we both went, okay, he needs wrenches. So how, what am I gonna do? So I decided to use the same, um, the same pattern that I used to get the right size, um, which is based kind of on the knitted skull cap, but I knit a smaller size. You mean the right size of, of this or the right size of hat? So what I had to do, this is actually because of the yarn that I used, and I'll thank you, that's Red Heart Soft. So it is a little bit thicker than the yarn that they used. So I actually, surprisingly enough, used <laughs> the toddler size, which is, that it is the toddler size, but what I did is I went on to Ravelry and I looked at patterns of adult hats using something similar to Red Heart Soft. And I knew the number of stitches that I needed and I juggled it a little bit to use that because I wanted to use the, um, basically the chart that was going on. Okay. Now, to be honest with you, this uh, knitted skull cap doesn't have a chart. 
Okay, so when they... So how do you do that without a chart? Well, what they do is they say so many main colors, so many oh, contrast okay. color, and they do that. That turned out really nice. And it's a perfect size. Whatever, it is. Whatever you it did is. to get there, you got there exactly. okay. Exactly. So I used the same number of stitches, and then I had to design something. So this is where life gets very funny. So I was looking for a picture of a wrench. We could find a tool hat, but it was every single tool in the world. So well, it had a saw, a hammer. It had all kinds of things. It was very like a lot going on there. Right. So I thought, okay, look, we were working for a wrench. So I looked. So I typed in tool, whatever, and up came these pair of socks. And these are called, let me get the name of it. These are called tools. It's a sock pattern by Nina Leitinen. That's now, cute. It is cute with the, the uh, wrenches and the hammers. It's very, very cute. The funny thing is the actual pattern for this is in Finnish. And I don't speak oh. Finnish. <laughs> but I knew um, that there was, if there was a chart and I had an idea that they would have a chart that I could then get the information. Well, look how resourceful you are. That's oh, amazing. I was having fun. So then <laughs> what I had to do, oh my goodness, here's my life. I'm not a designer, but I thought, okay, so I need to use the right number of stitches. Um, that skull was 10 stitches for each repeat. So I thought, okay, I need 10 stitches for each repeat. So I took the wrenches and I did this. You're, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. So I'm going to hold it up. But I didn't do it dark. So I, I created my own chart. And uh, there we go. It turned out wonderful. So Look I'm that. really, really happy because my son will know that it's wrenches. I'm not sure everybody else in the world will, but it'll keep his head warm. And there you go. That's really cool. They're going to love this for Christmas. I eh? think so. Yeah, we try to do yeah. things similar, but not the same. So I think it's a good idea. It's got idea. that little personal touch, which is always nice. There we go. Good so, job. So hats, hats, hats. Now, I can't remember which podcast. It could be Cozy Up Knits. It could be the Grocery Girls that they're going to have a hat knit along. And so I, these are for that. I purposely was thinking hats for everybody. Hats are a little easier. If you're knitting something else, it's a little tricky as far as sizing. Now, my last finished object. Oh, I'm so happy with this. So is, is it the color you're happy with or is it the fact that it's... Beautiful. You know what? <laughs> the stitch is amazing. So this is called the a moss stitch crochet shawl. shawl. Um, some people call it linen stitch if it's in knitting, but this is crocheted. And what I did was I used sheepies or sheepjus whirl. And I knew that if I used the whole skein, which has let me read to you how many meters it has a thousand meters in it let me yes it has a thousand meters in it that i was going to be in trouble it would be a big blanket oh so what i did was i wound off and there's what i wound off i wound off 50 grams and then i thought well i'm just going to make it as big as it is and it, i love Perfect size. yeah i love having the dark at the bottom right. that was what i really really wanted um this i think will make a cowl and wow. so I'm, I'm just going to hold on to that thought. That turned out on really that. nice. And it's a nice weight. It, it drapes really, really nicely. I love the stitching in that. That's gorgeous. It is. So I will, once again, I'll put in the YouTube video that allowed me to do that. It was great. It explained it really well. Um, but I'm really, really happy with that. You're so good at adding in your resources. That takes well, a lot of work. You know, I know. We, we does grab that. here and grab there and try yeah. and figure it out and we get things sorted out for people. So that's the that's idea. Yeah. So those are my finished objects and May, finished object for you. Well, um, I did take a photograph of a butterfly a long time ago. Yes. And I ended up painting that picture. Not recently. I painted the picture quite a while ago. Right. Um, but we thought we would kind of change the photograph up behind us because it's been up there for a while. Right. So, um, but you can't really see this one because it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is just take a photo and I'll put that in here okay, now. Okay, perfect. And um, that is one of my finished objects that I painted because I, I loved the butterfly photograph so much that I actually painted a picture to look like the photograph, which is not really what you're supposed to do in art. It's okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. You did an amazing yeah. job. You got the color right. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. So you so did a great exactly job. that's exactly what we saw. Exactly. So those are our finished objects. And next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is the Myra hat. And that's by Knox Mountain Knit Co. 
once again, I'm using my Knit Pick City Tweed DK. How many, how much do I have? I've probably got enough for another one. Um, now you'll notice that this is done. <laughs> I've not done the hat. I just didn't join the other ball. So there is what it looks like. I love the pattern on it. And I think it's nice when you've got a plain color or a tonal color because it really shows off that um, this little nice design that pattern. There, yeah. I really, really like it. And I think the two tones would show it off too. Like if you got the, the nice right. colors on the actual exactly. pattern. Exactly, exactly. Nice. If it was too variegated, I'm not sure it would. Now, once again, it's all about the pom pom. So, option one is to put a dark one on. Not sure about that. Option two is to put this one on. That's and nice. It's nice because it's got dark tips to mm -hmm. it. So, it's all about learning pom poms. These <laughs> pom poms have. Well, the, yeah, yeah, perfect. Sure. These pom poms have a little elastic, so I'm going to sew a button on the inside of the hat and then take that elastic through the top of the hat around the button, and that way the pom pom can be taken off. That'll be um, great. To wash it. That'll be nice one. All done. right, so that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Whoops, that was a little noisier than, <laughs> than I anticipated. That's okay. The second one. You've been busy again. I have been busy. Busy still. Is, I hope I'm saying it right, the Kiowa Shawl, and that's by uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns. And it's actually Tabitha Hedrick is the name of the designer. And here it is. So it is quite an interesting wow. construction. Is it ever? It is. I'm really, really happy with this yarn. It's so, a little fleck of green. Is that green? It is. is. So it's called tapenade is this color, which means it, tapenade is an olive tapenade, so green olive, oh, dark okay. olives. And then this is called amethyst brooch, I think. So it's great combination. Mid, midnight cravings. And I love this yarn. I'm really, really enjoying it. I hope there's going to be a little bit left. I'm not sure there's is, but I'm going to hope there's going to be a little bit left because it would be nice yarn to make... Right. Either a little bracelet or a little something with not that. Not sure how you'd wear this. I've got it all different ways here, but I'm not sure how this is going to go. But it'll be interesting when it's all finished <laughs> so to see what it's going to look like. Exactly. But I love the feel of it and exactly. I like the stitches. It looks great. Now, the neat thing is, uh, Minute Cravings sell their yarn through the Wool and Silk Company in Shelburne. And we had visited and they had said they're one of the few in Canada, not in Canada, in Ontario. They may be the only one in Ontario um, that sell this. And I thought, well, guess what? We need to get some of that. You and like I'm glad it. I did because now I have an understanding. If I see something that I want to do in figuring weight yarn, that this is beautiful yarn. It's nice it and plump mm -hmm. and it's good. So that's that. Now, my next work in progress. There's got to be a sock on the go. You've always got a sock on the go. Well, let's talk about this first. So this is the Casio Collar, and that's by Laura Nelkin. Once again, we're in that beading world. Beautiful. Now, I made one for somebody for Christmas, but then I thought I wanted to make one for me. Now, May was hearing me go, that's, this is what you were going to griping about. Uh, this is what I was <laughs> griping about yesterday. So we may um, have you take a picture of this because it's kind of hard right. to see it because it's so fine. Right. So it is lace weight yarn. So the um, kit itself comes with the clasps for the end, comes with these beads, comes with all these beads and the yarn, and obviously you get the pattern to do it. So the idea is you knit it to a point and there's going to be a small circle that will sit in between those two beads. And so it just sits down there. You can see it in the pattern. That's gonna be nice when it's all done, but um, why all the frustration yesterday? Um, I'll tell you what was happening. I was trying to watch TV and knit this. Oh. And so you have to, I, it's a paid for pattern, but you have, there's a pattern to it. And you have to put the beads in the right place and you have to count the number of rows and and it was too much to, I shouldn't have been doing it while I was trying it's a to watch TV. TV show though. <laughs> It was a great TV show. <laughs> if it was a bad TV show, so I didn't no need to, to pay attention. So that's what was happening. The pattern itself is written beautifully. It's got nothing to do with the pattern. I have made this before. You're taking responsibility. I'm taking okay. responsibility. But you do right. enjoy it when you're not I frustrated. Do. I do. Good. And once you get so, back on track, the problem I think for me was I would make a mistake and then I'd try and rip it back and it was getting late and the light wasn't great and it's mm. a dark yarn and it was just One a thing. One thing after another. Now, 
I noticed these beads are tiny. Do you wear magnifying glasses or do you have something else that you wear when you do the beads or just nope. your, really? Wow. Nope. And, then, and the neat thing about this is you string all the beads on before you start knitting. Wow. So there's a certain order that you put them in. and Wow. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. You yeah. should do a tutorial on that. It would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I can do that for oh, sure. There you go. So that's my first pattern with beads. Now my second one, I wasn't going to tell me about this because this is a surprise for her, but guess what? So much. Surprise. <laughs> um, it all has to do with feet so you want to make sure something fits so I bought a kit um, by Princess Lo it's called Princess Lola and that's by Laura Nelkin and great kit so once again it had the beads that were necessary you'd think socks and beads so there's beads around the cuff and the reason why it's called Princess Lola I won't say much more about it is the fact that on the bottom of the sock instead of having the pearl bumps against your foot it is just the stockingette stitch so it's nice and smooth so let me show you what I mean so there's the bottom of the sock by the way this is a hoe <laughs> it's a hoe so you can see the bottom here is the wrong side of stocking stitch so what that means is the right side the nice smooth side like this part here is going to be against your foot wow. so that is that's gonna be i knew there was a sock involved you you love doing it's, socks don't i you? do so i had to do a lot of work because the pattern itself is toe up you i tried toe up for you before you like them better when they're cuffed down and then I was busy working and then I had to remember this. And so it was it was a lot of juggling, but I've got it all written down. So the second sock is going to be much Love easier. Love the color. And like I have the all this left. And guess what? This is called Leading Men Fiber Arts. And it is beautiful yarn. This one, the colorway is Kaleidoscope. Look at the little, de you probably can't see that on camera, there's these little beading details mm, yes, here. Yes, maybe we can, if you're taking pictures yeah. of the other ones, maybe we can take a picture right. of there where the beads are. Yeah. So I haven't blocked it, it's on a blocker, not officially blocked. But really nice. Yeah, be I nice. think you're going to like it. Yeah. So it's it's not, obviously, you don't want to be putting those beads in with a pair of boots and having it hit your <laughs> yeah. ankle, but those are kind of nice for around the house. Yeah, so that'd be that great. Thank thing. you so much. Well, surprise. It, you're going to have to yeah, surprise, and then you have to wait till Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she's going to know most of what's yeah. going to be in your stocking, but that's, that's okay. So those are my works in progress, and next we're going to talk about our craft adventure. Welcome to Craft Adventures, and uh, Colleen, what have you been working on? Well, um, May's... A friend, Marg, who does miniatures with her, um, had these little, they call them snap bags. And I thought that would be great to put in knitting things or to put beads in to do those kind of things. So I thought I'll make one. So she um, gave me an idea of what to do. I looked at some YouTube videos and there's more than one way to do it. So I tried the first way and that's what you're gonna see. And then the second way, um, I'm going to try and then I'll bring that back. So first of all, I made it bigger than the ones that Marg had made. And the reason for that was I thought if I was going to put in knitting needles, then that would work. So there's lots of ideas of how you do this. There's an outer piece. There's a lining piece. Um, there are these things which I've never done, which are called prairie points. So you make these little points because they're your pull tabs. Um, I used batting because of what was going to be involved up here in the facing. Um, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I'm not sure that you can hear it. Yeah. So you open it and then it automatically closes. Now, if you hear this, you'll understand that inside there is something that's gonna click and snap it shut. The reason why it doesn't make that noise a lot is because of the batting. Now this, this, this magnetic thing in here, um, makes it more, uh, not like a project bag then, but right. more of a, like a keepsake little thing. Right. Closes. Now, they say you can't put money in it and have it not expect it to fall out. But it closes. That is right. so Right, and cool. it's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. There's no, it feels nothing. like it's magnetic. I know it feels like it's magnetic, Because it, pulls, it pulls there together. It exactly. closes exactly. shut like that. Look exactly. That. Well, so cool. So what's the secret? What's the secret? Well, the other thing, just before I tell you the secret, okay. I'll keep you waiting a little bit longer, <laughs> is I boxed the corners just because I wanted to be able to have it sit down like that. Right. Um, I just wanted it to do that. So that's going to help me if I put something for my knitting in. 
So that's that. Now, this is the magic secret. And you'll see that I've got tape and clips and all that kind of stuff. Is you just cut part of a tape measure and that noise is the noise that you hear there. So it's actually tape measure that's in there. It's a tape measure that's in there. Now you use electrical tape so that the sharp edges don't cut through the fabric. That's part of the reason why I wanted the batting in there. The other thing is I have the tape measure locked in place and I have these things. You think it's like a lot of <laughs> issues. So put extra tape, I put those in and I have it locked. Because, because as soon as this goes in, you lose it. It's done. <laughs> um, so anyway, I want to make a number of these. Um, this one, I'm just you're not going to be able to see because I use black. But um, I zigzagged the edges. Um, to finish them off, but there's a way to do this where there's no exposed seams at all. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm really happy with this. I'm so glad that right. Marg was be able to help me out. Um, so I'm really, really thrilled with it, um, but I'm gonna try and do the other one and see how it goes. And I'll bring that back on another crafting adventure. Nice. So I'm really, really, really nice. happy with it. And I love the I love the black in this material. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm really, really be a really nice pleased. project bag out of that too. It is. But I'm excited to see how you can kind of change this up and exactly. do different things with it. This is exactly. such a great little thing. Yeah. So thank you, Miniature Mark, for uh, <laughs> showing us. So we much. do call her Miniature Mark because yes, it's such a positive, helpful uh, group of young ladies. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. Like, that's so, right. So thank you. So that's my craft. So me. Well, um, speaking of miniature Marg and miniatures, <laughs> you know I belong to a miniature group and this is my first year. Um, looking forward to it. Now what happens, there's about 20, 21 people and they all used to get, before COVID, they would get together and they would meet once a month and then mm -hmm. everybody would bring a project. Uh, there'd be uh, one project, like say a gas station um, or a uh, diner mm -hmm. they've done. And this year the theme is Cinderella. So somebody who's great mind um, came up with the idea of Cinderella and came up with the plan. And then what everybody does is they contribute a kit okay. to this um, group. Mm -hmm. And then everybody contributes and you make the kit. The first kit uh, we received for September was uh, Cinderella's um, wall and the ceiling and, and that fireplace okay. room. Right. Um, and it's a 1 to 24 scale. Generally, the group does 1 to 12 scales, but they're doing 1 to 24 only because they these are shadow boxes. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the group gets a shadow box. Okay. And they got a good deal on these, and so this is why they kept the scale to 1 to 24. Okay. So this year, like I said, it's a, it is the Cinderella theme. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the first part of the kit, and I've started to do that. And... Um, Here's what it's going to look like, Colleen. There's a okay. little piece of wood in there. I think that's going to be okay. the fireplace. Wood. Excellent. Yes. And I don't know if you can see that on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the the ceiling. Yes. And the beams. And right. what happens? I got the beams separate, and you get everything separate, and you glue it all together. You've and done. Up, Holy you. smokes! You've done yeah. an amazing job. And the stucco. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a little video in here okay. on how to do the stucco and the beams, and we'll put that in right here. There's a, a visual of the stucco right there, and uh, what you do is you use acrylic paint, any acrylic paint from a craft store will do, and uh, you would just put a little bit on a piece of paper or uh, container, and you do a little bit at a time. Here we are having the uh, Kleenex. You just pull the Kleenex apart, and you rip it into dime-sized pieces. I was getting a little frustrated here, Colleen, because um, <laughs> the pieces were so small that I started using bigger pieces as I went along because was it was so it, small. Did it work the same way as the smaller pieces? Yeah, it worked just as well. I just folded, ended up folding it over. And here we're just putting on a little bit of the paint at a time so it's still wet. And you put okay. the Kleenex on when the paint is still wet. Um, and uh, So does the paint almost act like glue for the Yeah, cleats? you're right. Yeah, that's right. And there's a little piece. I think that's a little bit bigger than a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Must buy a bigger piece. And, uh, you know, to my brush was kind of firm, so it was it was able to make that, you know, like a toothbrush. A toothbrush you can use that or any kind of hard brush you can use. There's different ways to stucco. You can also use... Um, sponges and, and I see that you've left lines so is that the, those lines are for the um, beams that I'm going to be putting in oh excellent um, and you didn't want to put the beams in 
on the stucco because they may not have glued down quite okay, as well. I so yeah. this is just how we went along here. But uh, so I just carried on the ceiling doing it that way and I did the walls the same way. Here we have the beams for the ceiling. There were six of them and I wanted them to look a little bit uh, distressed. So what I did was I got um, a Stanley knife or you can use an exacto knife and I just took all the kind of sharp edges off and distressed them somewhat you know made gouges in them and and that type of thing um, there you go you can see that and sand them just lightly sand them and then after you sand them and get them looking the way you want them to look uh, use some stain some dark stain and I stirred it up. You don't want to ever shake your stain. You always want to stir it. And um, you can put stain on with a brush or a sponge or, or just a cloth. And then you have your distressed beams. This is the finished product. Um, it's not completely finished. Uh, next video or next time we do the craft, I will kind of show you how I did the stones on the fireplace. <sighs> Um, but it was fun to put together and I'm really looking forward to learning everything from this group. They've been so positive and they've had to change it up again because we're not meeting. We right. have to do a lot of photos right. online, a lot of written instructions, which you know what? It's not an easy thing no, to do to do a written all. instruction, how that's to right. write instructions, how to put this together. So that's new for them, I'm sure. Exactly. And it's difficult. But with a lot of pictures and a lot of positive um, comments and exactly. a lot of great support group yeah and you know what if you wanted to try one of these at home like a, a miniature group start out with you know maybe five people small group right everybody contributes to a project exactly. and then just grow from there yeah. and the ideas that you you give off of each yeah. other and the, the feedback has just been amazing i like, know now you're being awfully modest so you need to talk about what you did with the ceiling that was different well, the ceiling came flat, so you can do your own your own little thing right, if you right, want right. to. And the ceiling came very flat, and I thought, I've just went to all this work to put all these beams in, and you can't see them because the ceiling would be like this. <laughs> so I thought, how could we see it in the shadow box and show off the ceiling? So I just put in little corners um, so the ceiling would tip up. So it's you're a not, great idea. You're not losing the integrity of the 1 to 24 scale. Right. But you're showing off yeah. the uh, ceiling. So I just kind of raise it up a little yeah. bit. And you're allowed to do make modifications. Right. And make it your now, own. I mentioned that because you got a lot of positive feedback. Everybody was really excited about it and said that was right. a great idea. And so, yeah. So yeah. everybody puts in their two cents and yeah. it's good. Well, I hope I hope you like the video of how to do the stucco. That's what I learned from everybody too on how to do that. Oh, I never pretty. knew that. So every week and um, every month, I'm going to learn something new, and exactly. I'm going to share that what I learned from the group with you, so that That's we can all fantastic. maybe work on something together. Or if you're doing Good. a project, you'll know how to stucco. That's so great. So what happens is, Colleen and everybody, <laughs> you sit it in your little uh, little space here. It just sits in there, and it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put some more stuff there, and then and then up here you're gonna have Cinderella, and you're gonna have different projects. Like I think okay. they're gonna do candlesticks. There's gonna be oh, wow. brooms, buckets, oh, and so wow. people. It's gonna be real. Yeah, it's gonna like be a group project, and everybody does it. And at the end, they get together and they show uh, everybody what everybody's done and what you've learned. Oh, from that's that. gonna be it's so awesome. good. Now, to on the bottom, there's going to be Cinderella's carriage. So I'm oh, not sure who's goodness. in charge of Cinderella, Cinderella's carriage, but that's going to be something to piece together. Absolutely. And then everybody's going to have their own little shadow box. Right. And then what, what some people have done is there's a hole in there. There's nothing behind the wall, or like mm -hmm. a spare bedroom or whatever. Right. And they put their displays in there, like picture frames and that. Oh, and so it looks like it's just flat them. against the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So interesting group, going to be learning a lot. Exactly. Um, just, um, so that was that's going to be exciting and that's fun and it's fun to share all uh, that with you. So um, that's where we're at. So. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. Souvenirs this time involved a little bit of travel. So obviously you can't go and shop the same way as you used to be able to. But what I did do is order some things online and then arrange the pick them up. Then we didn't have to pay for shipping right. because Canada is lovely, but shipping and is expensive. I, and I think the furthest we drove was about an hour, an hour and a half. Maybe? Uh, about an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, wasn't it too was bad. good. No, it was great. So 
we went to two places, both in Cambridge. So it, it was a plan. Um, it wasn't just, May, I'm going to take you all over Ontario. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> no, it was a plan. So the first place was to order something from iguana beads in Cambridge. Now, it's tricky to order beads. I was really hoping we could have gone in to look, but they can't in COVID. And it's of course, just, you know, people are touching that. You exactly. think of all that. So I'm with yeah. them on that. Yeah, exactly. No, I understood exactly. But I find color is hard on the online on online, online. monitors yeah exactly so it's okay i'm really happy with what i bought so i'm not showing you all the beads that i bought but i'm showing you some of the beads because we wouldn't be able to get a truck loaded <laughs> <laughs> okay it's not that bad it's not that bad it's close but it's not that bad so what i did because i'm learning as i'm doing these kits and so mostly um the size of beads are eights and sixes the strange thing is a size six is actually a bigger bead than a size eight because it has to do with the number of beads that fit in an inch approximately the other thing i've learned is that there are certain types of beads that are more uniform the same shape um, and so they're better to work with and they're more expensive Yes. If they're uniform. I would imagine they are. Yes, they are. So um, there is Mayuki, and there is Matsuno, and there is Toho. How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Three names. Oh, my goodness. But what well, I ordered... Look what you're learning, though. I know. And to me, I, I'm just a learner at heart. Um, so what I did was I ordered some Mayuki seed beads in size 6 and in size 8. And these are some of them. So these are size eight. So they're a little bit smaller. Um, usually you get one strand of yarn through. If it's lace weight, you could maybe get two. I'm not sure. Um, but we have some, you can get different finishes on them. So I'm really, really happy. Now the trick is, as we found out, don't open the top in the car. Because <laughs> you can hear the beads go yeah. and you can't figure out where they and went. And you would never be able to find these. these no, so I tiny. know. They're so now, tiny. Do they mostly all come in tubes like this? Um, yes. Now, do you take them out of the tubes and put them in a different container? Because the I haven't with these because I'm just right now keeping them stored. And it, to lay them all so you can see them. It's Maybe that. sometime you could store all your little storage. Oh, we could do that for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Now, these ones are size 6. And one is metallic and one, they line them with different colors. So um, the one, I think it will be on your left. It's on our right. But anyway, you, oh, and of course, Mason is still around. So <laughs> that's just what I do. <laughs> My right, your left, whatever. <laughs> oh, dear. So anyway, never mind. You could point. Why don't you just point? Yes, these are the metallic ones. <laughs> these are the ones that are lined. So these are aqua, but they're lined in lavender. Like, can you get better beans wow. for me? So I'm really happy with them. You get a number of beads. Most often when you're choosing a pattern with beads, they'll tell you how many grams of beads that you need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can tell they're a little larger than the eights or a little larger. A little smaller than the sixes. Exactly. You That's can right. tell just by looking at them. Exactly. Okay. So anyway, I was really happy with those. And the other thing that I ordered was some, it's called Wildfire Thermally Bonded Beading Weaving Thread. It's a lot of words. That's what I ordered. So, so this is their white, um, I guess they call it frost. Um, and it's interestingly enough, it's very thin. You can see that on there. Interestingly okay. enough, I was watching a YouTube video and they were talking that green is the one that color that goes with most. Oh, I can't get Let's that out of there. But then, but then <laughs> I can just, just me and all over the place. All I'm going to say is Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue. <laughs> That's right. Oh my goodness. It would not be it, funny if I did that on camera. It's... It would be lovely. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Anyway. You can kind of see how thin that is. Yes, it's very thin. I'll leave and they that. say that uh, the color green goes if you're going to be weaving with beads, that the green is the color that blends with most. Wow. Who would have thought? Who knew? Now, the other thing is, and this is it was important to me, so I was looking at, there's a fire line, and this is Wildfire, two different companies, two different kinds of um, thread, but um, they found that some of the color will come off, on some of them, um, so if it was it was kind of like a smoky black, your fingers would turn black. Oh, okay. And I have that when I'm working with black 
yarn. There's a word which I can't remember. I'll get made to put it in under here. Um, that's what happens for some people. And so I end up with black fingers. Just some people? Just some people. It doesn't happen for everybody. Wow. And the first time I was making a shawl and I started and I knit and my hands were turning black and I thought, okay, I better find out if it's color fast. So I ripped everything out, which was not the right thing to do, but I ripped out as much as I'd done. And then I tested to see if the yarn was color fast and the yarn was color flat fast. It was just not color fast on my oh. fingers. So oh. needless to say, then I had to re it, but that's okay. More knitting for your money. That's now, what is I that said. the word you're looking for? Color fast? No. No. It's, it's a noun. Is it's it a, a noun? noun. And when you, it's I don't know if you get yeah. to be our age, but the first, <laughs> you know how you forget things? You know you can, mm -hmm. you know. And the first thing that you lose as you get older is nouns. Nouns. That's what they tell us. That's so what they, I that's will what we hear. So find we, the word and I will put it in. It's an odd word, which is not something that I use in my normal everyday right. language, which is part of the problem. <laughs> so anyway, so May's going to help me out yeah. and put the word on the screen. So that's my first bit of souvenirs. My second bit of souvenirs was to go to the Galt House of Yarns, which is also in Cambridge, and pick up some yarn. So I'm thinking about winter. I'm thinking, not right at the moment because I'm sweating buckets, but I'm thinking about winter and starting to knit some sweaters. And it's going to be a little noisy. So this is Katia Cotton's Concept Merino. And so I... Do you want to do this way or this way? Does it that part way is probably better. Okay. So this actually says that it's a gray color, but to me it looks kind of black. It's going to end up looking kind of black and gray. Um, and so I'm going to make a sweater. And I knit one out of similar that was navy and really like how it feels on. So I'm looking That'll forward look to nice that. That'll look nice when it's done. I'm always yeah. interested to see how this can go into a sweater. Exactly. So Neat. I'm really, really happy with that. The pickup was very easy. Iguana Beads did a great job. Galt House of Yarns did a fantastic job. So I would recommend that. If you are able to go and do curbside pickup, it's a good thing to do. And you know what? We had so much fun because we packed the lunch on purpose because yeah. we didn't want to go to restaurants and that because right. of COVID. Right. Um, and we went to different parks and we just had a great week of exactly. traveling it around. It was fun. Um, our little picnics were great, weren't exactly. they? Exactly. Yeah, we take our time. seats and our tables and we put ourselves under a, a tree and uh, the weather <laughs> exactly. was fantastic. So, yeah, it yeah. was good driving. Weather. It was really wonderful. So those are my souvenirs. Me? There's the door. <laughs> Hang on. That was the door. And, uh, and guess what? I'm sure there's more souvenirs that have come to the house. We will talk. We'll do those souvenirs next time. But that's timing funny. is everything. Timing is everything. Right when we're talking about souvenirs. Yes. So I'm so excited to share my souvenir with you today. It was kind of a too large to bring right down here. Right. Now. But I do have a video of um, me opening it up, um, unboxing. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, those of you who've been watching the uh, our channel know that I'm planning on, we are planning on having a van and doing some van conversions. Mm -hmm. We don't have the van, <laughs> but I couldn't wait. I just no, was so excited. Couldn't. And I need to just start getting, accumulating some of the things for the van that we don't right. have. That's right. And so the first thing I wanted, which I thought was amazing, is these tables are called Lagoon Tables. And they use them in uh, RVs, they use them in boats, and they use them in van conversions. And what it is, it's not actually a tabletop, it's just the mount, so you actually put on your own tabletop. Okay, so that's whatever good. size you need. Right. So the mount can go different places. You can take it apart and put it on different places. Oh, wow, that's great. If you get more than one mount. Right. But the neat thing is this table kind of moves like this. <laughs> Hopefully not while you're I just moving. loved it. I just thought it was an amazing thing. So I've got to order one of these, even right. though I don't have the van. Right. So uh, we we I went to order, and it was there was a couple of places you could order from, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, we live in Canada, but I ordered it one from the UK because it was cheaper actually. By the time you paid shipping and duty, duty. it was still cheaper. Because they were uh, having a good sale. Yes. Wow. Marine Teak. Dot. Uh, UK, but so I'll put it UK? Yeah. Yes. So, um, I will put that link up there just in case you want to buy one for yourself. <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, I'm going to put the video in here of me unboxing oh, it because I was perfect. so excited. And then we'll, we'll talk when we come back. 
Today I'm going to be unboxing my Lagoon table mount. I received this from Marine Teak UK. Uh, it came from FedEx. The delivery took three days, which was absolutely amazing. I haven't touched anything yet. I, this is how I received it in the mail. So let's get started. These Lagoon tables are going to be excellent if you have a boat or a trailer or you're redoing which I'm doing is uh, redoing a, a van conversion. Nice bubble wrap. Comes in a nice box. Look at that, that is excellent. Wow, very nicely packaged. This is what you get in the package. I can't say enough about the company, they have been excellent. Three days shipping, FedEx, not a problem. Shipping was reasonably priced. Canada from the UK. And the mounting tools. Very nice. Well, that was my video of unboxing. I was so excited that day when I got it. <laughs> and it only took three days to get here from FedEx. It's amazing. I was shocked. Yeah, uh, You know, because when you're putting out that kind of money, I mean, um, I think it was less than $300. And if you ordered it from Canada, it was $300 plus shipping. I think it was like oh a little closer gosh. to $400. Right. So um, You did really well. You, and, you know, when you're putting out that kind of money, you kind of want to get the product and you want to get it quick. And right. uh, I couldn't ask for it. It was like That's three days. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. So that was my souvenir, and that was very exciting. Yes. And the next one will be the van, but that's, <laughs> we're talking next year. So. Yeah. But anyway, Amaze good at planning. I think this is almost like an image board, you know, where you are a right. vision board, where you put the things up that you want in your life, and then it will come. That's so right. I think you get a lagoon table, and then... I know the van's coming. <laughs> I got a table, now I have to get buy a van to put it in. <laughs> it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse, but hey, it's okay. I'm okay as long that. as you get the cart and the horse, you're in yeah, good shape. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> exactly. So those are our souvenirs. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate that you come and spend time with us. Subscribe, comment down below, uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, I guess there's a bell somewhere that you can hit for notifications. And what that means is that you would get information saying there's a new episode coming up. So if you'd like to do that, that would be great. We'd really appreciate it. And until next time, you take care.